Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Mellencamp. We are going to talk about creativity in travel videos today. Um, so it'll probably be a little different from some of the other presentations you've had, and we'll get a chance to watch some, some really nice, fun work. I am the president of Vimeo. For those of you who don't know what Vimeo is, Vimeo is an online video sharing platform where people share, discover, and upload great high quality HD content with absolutely no pre-roll or other interruptive ads. So it's sort of the antithesis of sort of the you know, ad world video content online. Vimeo has been around since 2004, so we are in no way a new company. We are based in New York. And we now serve um, about 150 million unique users worldwide every month and are one of the top video sites online today. We grew up as a, as a site that served the creative community and served the filmmaker. And we were really based as a tool set. And, and over time, as we grew to get to sort of the, these much bigger numbers, one of the key areas that was critically important for us is curation, human curation, not algorithmic, not based on what's popular, not based on what's hot right now. And so for many years now, we have been curating the best in online video. And we do that through a channel called Staff Picks. Um, we have a dedicated team of people that watch online videos all day, looking for what's best. They use um, some uh, internal tool sets and other techniques that we typically keep to ourselves. But basically, their goal is to seek out the most innovative and the best work to try to catch it early, to try to catch it first, and then to bring it to, to audiences so they can discover something new. And what's interesting is that the travel category has always been a really critical and key part of these great works. And it's one of the areas where we really see some of the most innovative film and techniques and innovations occurring. And this, this continues today. And so currently, there are five trends that we're seeing that is increasing viewer engagement, that audiences are loving, that we're seeing a lot of popular and viral videos happen with. And I'm going to walk through some of those. But before I do, what we're going to do is start with a little compilation of those techniques, and then I'll watch, walk through them in a little more uh, specificity after. So unfortunately, I can't really go back to that very easily. But I'm going to walk you through the five different styles that we saw there and tell you a little more about them. So the first one is time lapse. Time lapse has been around for quite a while. It's sort of a classic Vimeo category. Um, it's hugely popular. And after you know, it's been around for maybe four or five years, it is still hugely popular. Filmmakers are still doing tons of highly innovative work in the area. It's an unbelievable way to capture a short, well, a long period of time in a short period of time. So what it is technically is it's photos taken at set intervals that are then stitched and knit together in the post-production process. Um, absolutely gorgeous. The one at the top is actually, it's a screenshot, a little bit of the Aurora Borealis in Iceland. It's from a video called Eye of the Storm. And if you don't want to go to Iceland after seeing this video, there would be something com completely wrong with you because it is so magical um, that you just are dying to go. Um, that one was done by actually a filmmaker named Henry June Wa Lee. Tilt shift is another one that in the travel category, and this is not about all Vimeo trends, it's about within the travel category that we see. Um, tilt shift is the ones that you saw where it looks like a little toy town, while the cars and the people you know, don't look real, they look fake, but yet they are. Um, it was actually, it's been really big for a few years, it's continuing to be. And there's a, there's a, a man by the name of Keith Ludet who's sort of like the king of tilt shift and, and actually Back in the day, he developed the lenses that allowed this to, to happen. And now there's like a million other tools that filmmakers can use. There's probably an app for that. Um, and he covers things and has done things that have gotten you know, millions of people to watch them, from Carnival as an event to this, uh, Singapore as a country that go completely organically, naturally viral. 
um, and really drive awareness and interest in those locations. The next is GoPro. We all know about GoPro. Many of us probably have a GoPro. Um, GoPros um, are huge, getting bigger, and we're seeing um, that sort of effort in GoPros and what people do and where they wear their camera and what they can do with it continuing to grow and grow and grow. Um, it's been particularly strong, obviously, in action sports and in the sports travel area, um, but we think that it has tremendous promise for so many other areas. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that and when I talk about you know, what's, what we think is coming next and what we're seeing. Hyperlapse. Hyperlapse is actually the, an evolution of time lapse, where it's much more fast moving and where time lapse you're normally standing still and filming, you know, photographing something over time, stitching it together. Hyperlapse is you're moving through something. We will see an example of it in a little bit. Um, well, I'm going to show one more video before we're done. Um, and it's really a great way to journey through a landscape or a city or a place and see it in a whole new way very quickly. Special effects. So this has actually been probably an area that in the last couple years is really taking off. And it's all about how technologies are more accessible. So there's sort of like the phones and the cameras that are getting great. But for a high-end filmmaker, it's the software. It's Adobe Premiere and After Effects and everything else and the equipment, the more expensive equipment that used to be only for feature filmmakers that is now accessible to them. So a lot of the, the younger filmmakers are really starting to play with special effects. And we are seeing new stuff every single day and what they're able to do. One of the examples um, in the compilation was at the very end, and it was in Tokyo. And the filmmaker, um, it looks like he's going forward and everybody else is moving backwards. And in fact, he filmed himself walking backwards and then switched it in post-production. But then he went further and he, he, he actually paints out cars and paints out people to create the landscape that he wants. It's a comp totally compelling video called uh, Tokyo in Reverse. And, and again, it's just a great way to say, God, I really got to go to Tokyo. I got to go visit that city. What you'll see even in the next work we're going to watch in a couple minutes is that these techniques now, filmmakers are, are using them all potentially even within one video. So they kind of shift and go in between. You'll start off in time lapse, you'll move to tilt shift. Um, you might bring in a GoPro scene at some point, and they're kind of mixing and matching them. But without question, these techniques are driving true, lengthy engagement by customers and viral sharing and everything else. And videos extremely popular across the board. What's also interesting about these techniques and about a lot of these works that go that get go viral and, and do very well is that a lot of them don't have words. So they don't have words, they don't have a lot of copy, and what's great about that is you really can access a global audience. And so they're going globally viral, not US only, um, which I think might be of interest to all of you. Um, what's happening with brands as it relates to how do they participate in a lot of this new filmmaking and these new techniques and innovations that are going on is getting in touch with these filmmakers. You know, it's not a whole production crew, it's a filmmaker going to a place, being creative, coming up with a new way to see something and being inspired. And what they create out of that is amazing. And we as Vimeo believe that the best thing you can do if you want to get an authentic piece of work that's going to be completely shared and work really well is to give the filmmaker freedom. So your choice of filmmaker is critical. The relationship you have with that filmmaker is critical. And we've seen some great examples here. So um, Vimeo, uh, did, did ourselves some work with Tourism Malaysia in what was our first, what we call our brand creative fund, where we match filmmakers um, and brands and then um, to create new work and then market it and promote it on our site. But in this case, um, Tourism Malaysia uh, commissioned five filmmakers to make 10 films. And what's interesting about this is that the films were gorgeous, they were beautiful, they did extremely well, but one of them even won a British Film Academy and Television Award and was seen in festivals all around the world. Um, and so when you get the right filmmaker, like really amazing things can happen. I also want to call out a recent example on Can Canary Islands tourism, which is actually covered by Skift um, in an article, and where they actually engaged seven Vimeo filmmakers to have seven days one filmmaker for seven islands, one filmmaker per island, to create three to four minute pieces that already have been seen by over 1.4 million people um, and are doing are gorgeous. And I can't imagine if 1.4 million people are spending three to four minutes thinking about the Canary Islands, there's no way that there's not more people going there. Um, two of those videos were staff picked by us. We have very strong editorial uh, and business walls, so there was no influence between these, so that was really based on the quality of the work, and they're, they're just stunning. Um, 
One of them is called Frames for Life, if you're interested. Um, we are going to watch an example of another one that we think is very special that was also staff picked by us. It's called Goal Barcelona. It was commissioned by the Catalan, Catalan Tourism Board. You're gonna see it's by a guy named Rob Whitworth, who's one of the experts in hyperlapse. But you're gonna see some of these other techniques in there too. So we're only gonna watch a minute of it, and then I'm gonna ask him to stop, um, and then we'll go on. Powers with me. Okay, that's probably good. It goes on for a couple minutes. So isn't that beautiful? It's been seen almost two million times, and that's on Vimeo alone. And that video may have been redistributed elsewhere. So the power of these and the, the sort of like sexiness of, of Barcelona, and that was a mix of techniques. There was hyperlapse in there. There was you know, tilt shift in there. There was a little bit of everything in there. Um, pretty amazing. Um, when we think about as, as a company and, and we look at videos every day and we think about what's coming next, there's sort of some trends that are very, very early that aren't totally established and some that are really large. So adventure filmmaking and it, it, adventure films are going to continue to be huge. We're continuing to see it, but we're also continuing to see massive innovation in this area. Um, and technologies and GoPros continue to get better, continue to allow filmmakers to do more. One of the things that I do want to comment on is I've noticed in a lot of the sort of adventure films, we see consumer products brands sponsor them. And it's, it's always done in a very different way than you see elsewhere. It's not branded entertainment, but they actually integrate uh, the brands into the front of the film, into the credits. And the filmmaker does this themselves, so it's a very authentic way to do it. And it leaves that very passionate, very driven, quite frankly, generally, with a lot of you know, spendable income, audience, um, really loving these brands, and the travel industry doesn't seem to me like they've taken advantage of it. So I wanted to mention that because I think it's an opportunity to do so. These works go very viral. They're done by amazing filmmakers to really passionate audiences, and I, I actually think it's an opportunity um, for many of you potentially here to consider. Another area that surprised us, but that we are seeing that will probably surprise you too, is transactional on demand. So Vimeo, we have a product called Vimeo On Demand. We launched a year and a half ago. So it's pretty young. And um, one of the surprises that we've had with it is two of our top films are sort of in that adventure film area. So one of them, um, and they're really non-standard format. So one of them is called North of the Sun. It's a film about surfing in Norway. It's 46 minutes. It costs $10 to buy, $5 to rent. It's done extremely well. Um, and it's uh, you know, 46 minutes just you know, all about Norway all the time. Um, we have another one called In the High Country, um, which is about mountain running. So there's a ton of amazing footage, and it's particularly a, um, an athlete who does that. It's only 34 minutes. It costs $10 to rent. It's been one of our top sellers. Um, absolutely amazing. Patagonia has invested in a film, a full-length feature documentary, on the dams in the US and the challenges we have with that. And we're finding audiences are really loving this and they are paying for the content and then they're also engaging for these really extended periods of time. Um, and we think that that's really gonna grow a lot over the coming years and I think we're gonna see more brands begin to play. Um, on a more light note, our drones and space travel. So we are seeing very early Space videos come in. They're not like beautiful yet. They're not staff picked worthy, um, but they're starting to come in in a lot more volume. We're getting videos from space stations. We're getting a lot more drone footage. We think that the filmmakers are going to start taking advantage of drones the next couple of years, and we're going to start to see some really interesting interplay between that. Um, and people do like watching these. It's a very different way to look at locations. Um, and finally, as Vimeo, we're investing heavily in curation ourselves. So we curate one channel now called Staff Picks. Early next year, um, we're gonna start curating a lot more across more categories and travel will be one of them where we really want people to discover the world 
um, through these gorgeous videos and all these filmmakers and their techniques, and will be um, travel will be one of the core categories that we cover. And that's it. And I made my time. Thank you.